Hi folks, John Bergman here. I am uh, going to talk to you guys about flipped classroom for administrators. I really want to emphasize what that looks like for you guys. A couple things I want to highlight here. Um, if you're interested in following me on Twitter, there's my Twitter handle. I've got a couple of important websites I'd like you to look at. FlippedLearning.org is a nonprofit organization that Aaron Sams and I started uh, recently. Uh, lots of information, training opportunities, etc. My personal blog is very similar, flipped-learning.com. Uh, lots of resources there as well and my musings. And then uh, probably the best place to go is this right here, flippedclassroom.org. I'd encourage you to go to flippedclassroom.org. It is website, uh, social media website for flippers, completely free. A uh, place for you to contact and connect with other people who are interested in the flipped classroom. And of course, if you're a Twitter follower, the hashtag flipclass is a great thing to follow. There's a flip class chat every Monday night if you're at all interested. But I want to talk today about administrators and how administrators play in this game. So I really believe that we're in exciting times. What I mean by that is exciting times of change. You see, I think we're moving from this classroom, that, that teacher-centered classroom of the past, um, to this classroom, this learner-centered, um, inquiry-driven, problem-based classroom of the future. This is where I think we're moving. And administrators are starting to see this as important. All right? um, and let me emphasize something. One thing that's important that Aaron and I often say is that this, this idea of the flipped classroom was built into trenches. So it was built by, by, by teachers uh, practicing in classrooms. You see, this is education from the bottom up, a grassroots movement, if you will. Not not education reform from the top down, which has sadly so often occurred and frankly been, I would say, largely ineffective. So what, let's kind of do a little background about the flipped classroom. The flipped classroom really needs to start with one question. How many questions? That's right, one question. What is that one question? It is this. What is the most valuable use of your class time, or shall I say your face-to-face -face time with students? What is the best use of your class time? Um, if you answer that question, I think you can get so far. Well, let me explain what how we answered that question. So in the 2007-2008 school year, as we actually came up with the idea in 2006-07 school year. Anyways, um, Aaron and I thought, uh, what if we took our direct content and we moved it to so uh, the lecture, right? So we, we were high school uh, science teachers, particularly chemistry, and there's, let's say there's this much time in class. But the problem is there's this much stuff to cover, right? And so what we did is we took that, that home time, it was right here, this extra stuff that had been pushed to the home, and we moved it back into the class. And out of the class, we took the lecture. There were still things that, you know, activities and labs and stuff that we'd always done and we kept doing. We didn't change any of that. Eventually we did, which I might briefly touch on a little bit later. But... That's the flip. What was done at home was done in class, was done in class, is done at home. Okay? Now, to, before I really talk to you administrators, I want to make a couple of important things that everybody seems to want to ask these like critical questions, and they are important, but they've been resolved. Question number one, flipped learning relies on the videos. So many people say it's all about these videos. It's about the videos. There's been a lot of hype about the Sal Khan, Khan Academy videos and all that kind of stuff. It's not about the videos. It's about the active, engaged stuff that you can do in the class. That is the key. Another big misconception is they think it, it really hurts students who um, have little access at home to technology. Um, this is an important issue, so don't, don't say I'm demean, diminishing this problem, but we solved this problem, at least for us, in our school in the mountains of Colorado. Um, we had 25% of our kids without internet at home, so what did we do? Well, some kids had computers but no internet, so we gave them flash drives to put them on. And then we had kids who had no computer, no internet, and so we put them on DVDs. So we'd be like a, a unit at a time, like, you know, six or seven videos. We'd put them on a DVD, they went, took it home, they put it on their TV, and they pushed play. Every kid so far um, has had a DVD player, access to one. Um, and with the advent of uh, more and more phones that have video capability, uh, the vast majority of students have that option as well. So it can be solved. And in fact, another thing to say about this whole digital divide, you don't have to always have the videos um, as homework. Uh, another big uh, problem that people cite when they discuss the flipped uh, learning is they say that it's just propagating a bad teaching technique, that is lecture. That lecture is a bad technique of, of communicating content. Um, if you are a person who can teach completely without direct instruction of your whole class, then you're probably a better teacher than me. Uh, because I really needed that time, that direct instruction. I just don't believe the place of it is me with 30 kids all at the same time. So uh, I guess, you know, if you if you don't believe in direct instruction at all, that's fine. But for those of us who do, I think this is a viable and important technique. 
Now, when I talked about the flip classroom, at least in that first iteration, I talked about it in our, actually we did that for one year, and then we moved to what we called the flipped mastery approach. There's something important to say that it's, I would really, really encourage, and I challenge teachers all the time who flipped their class to take it to the next level, to what we're calling flipped class 201, or possibly 202, or to some other level. And we moved to a mastery system, which we talked in our book about, the second half of our book is about the flipped mastery approach, where you start with the direct instruction, you move to practice, application, and then when they get to the end of a unit of, of study, it's assessed. That was, that's always the process. But if they don't understand it, they don't reach a, a prescribed level of mastery, then they have to remediate. And uh, so kids, it becomes asynchronous. Where the kids work at different levels. And if you want to know how that works, I'd encourage you to read the book. Some benefits of the flipped mastery model is that students were independent learners. They learned how to learn for themselves. They, uh, the teacher is able to differentiate. The, the subtitle of our book is Reach Every Kid in Every Class Every Day. Why? Because we talk to every kid in every class every day. We truly had a differentiated experience. It was a personalized learning environment for students. Now, another benefit of the mastery model is that there's no gaps. So a student actually has to learn it before they can move on. So um, so often in, in some subjects, a kid, you get to the end of the unit, kid gets a 42, and what do you do the next day? Well, you move on to the next chapter or the next unit or whatever, right? And then kids get lost, and then there's gaps, and then they don't understand something, and then they're lost, right? Um, also, if you're talking to every kid, every kid, how many kids? Every, that's right, every kid. Uh, there's no place for them to hide, I like to say. They, they, you really can uh, reach every kid in every class every day. So now let's, let's uh, dive down to the administrator piece. So if you've got teachers who are flipping or considering flipping their classes, what does that look like? Number one, know that class will look like this. It will not look like this. You're going to have um, a very different active engaged classroom. Don't expect the kids to be sitting in nice neat rows and don't expect it to be necessarily a quiet environment. Okay. Also, you know, I've, I've talked to a number of industries, oh, I want this change, I want this change. The reality is, is people change at different rates and I, I'm sure you administrators understand this and, and now that I'm in a, a, an administrative role as a district technology coordinator and instructional coach, um, that role I've realized that I, I need to be patient with teachers as they undergo the process of change. So give them time to change. Also give them time to collaborate. Um, the flip class, you know, like I said, was born uh, earlier on, I said, by, by uh, teachers in the trenches. But, you know, at first it was just Aaron and me, right, in our classrooms that were next to each other. But then it, our, our world expanded and we uh, got with social networking and met other teachers and whatever. It's become much better because we've got a collaborative group of people to work with. It's best, of course, if you can collaborate face-to-face -face at your school with teachers. Um, but there's also other ways to collaborate that is not necessarily um, – in a face-to-face -face environment. It could be, you know, through social media or something like that. Also, give them permission to make mistakes, okay? Um, we made a lot of mistakes. Our administrator, our, our principal, Del Garrick, principal at the Woodland Park High School, he um, gave us, we, we made mistakes, and he basically forgave us for mistakes, and, you know, it, he allowed us to just uh, experiment, and I would encourage you to do that, and no, it's not going to run completely smooth. You know, Teacher evaluation is kind of an interesting thing, right? Because there's these sort of rules that everybody follows, you know, Charlotte Danielson and all that stuff. You know, what is it going to look like? How do you, how do you measure this, right? Um, here's the question I want you to ask. Are the students engaged? Your teacher evaluation will need to look different, okay? Uh, Dell, my, my uh, Dell Garrick, our principal, um, he came in our class. He looked around. He said, the kids are active. They're engaged. They're learning. I get it. You're good. Okay, um, not exactly um, the big formal thing that fit into the nice little rubric, but uh, he got it, okay? You know, also, it can be discouraging. As you are working through um, something new, as teachers are trying something new, encourage them to, um, to just keep on keeping on. You know, and one thing also, I'll come back to Dell. I think he had some wise words. One thing we were talking about change, just change in general, not just the flipped classroom, but the flipped classroom was the context of our conversation. He said, you know, John and Aaron, the first year you're trying something new, um, it's hard. Uh, roadblocks, you've got pushback from people, etc. The second year, you work out the kinks. The third year, it's culture. And you know what? That's exactly the progression that we saw. He said that in year one, and it was exactly the progression we saw by the third year. You know, I, I think the best way to, if you really want the flip classroom to happen in your school is you need to get a coach. And so I'd encourage you to uh, reach out to some of the, the flip class experts. Frankly, this is one of the things that we're doing at Flipped. Um, learning.org, our nonprofit organization, is that we are um, uh, beginning a coaching model where uh, f experienced flip class teachers can come alongside um, schools, districts, etc. So I encourage you to uh, find a coach that can walk them through this. It doesn't have to be one of us, but find somebody else. You know, and clearly the flip classroom does rely on some technology. And so 
um, I want to remind you that you are the boss of the IT department. <laughs> So often I've seen, as I've uh, had a lot of experiences and opportunities to travel around this country and the world even, um, about the flipped classroom, it seems like the IT department w rules the school. And I, I encourage you to make sure that the IT people are there to support this endeavor. It, it's not like it's huge amounts of IT, but there is a level of technology that they're going to need support on. You know, be a buffer. Didn't have a cool picture for this one, but be a buffer for the, um, you know, there's going to be some uh, pushback from possibly the community. I would encourage you to stand behind your teachers and say, we're doing this and this is what we think is best for kids. And so be that for your teachers. Um, also be a sounding board. Um, there's going to be some some hiccups. There's going to be some road bumps in the, in the road as they make this. So be the person that they can listen to um, and have a conversation with. All right. Now here's something I really like to challenge you administrators on, model it. Flip your faculty meetings. I have sat into too many faculty meetings with uh, administrations who sometimes are using it as just content dissemination. They've gone to the lecture mode, really, and there's got to be a way. What I ask you, like I asked uh, at the beginning, what is the best use of your face-to-face -face time? Not your face-to-face -face time with students, but your face-to-face -face time with your teachers. I would bet it's, you know, I, if I, and I am, I have flipped faculty meetings, or not really faculty meetings, but my technology committee meetings. I really want us to use that time to have a conversation. So if there's information that needs to be got out to my group, I'm going to email it and I'm going to expect them to read it. So uh, I would really encourage you to model this and think through what this could look like from your level. And I, by modeling it, I think that's a very powerful thing. You know, ultimately, I think this is all about personalization. The flipped classroom is about personalizing the learning environment for all kids, or in your case, personalizing the, the professional development of your teachers or um, the, 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 yeah. So back in 1950, when you're buying a car, you know, your choices were, you know, gray or tan or red or whatever, right? But, you know, if you move now, if you go to the, the Ford website, you can build your own escape from the roof rails down. You see, our world has moved to a personalized environment. Our schools, sadly, have not caught up to the personalized um, revolution that has taken place in, a, in um, the world. You know, you go to Starbucks and you can order exactly what you want. But in education, you walk in and it looks, the classrooms in many cases, not always, in many cases, still like, look like the classes of 40, 50, and 100 years ago even, with a teacher standing in front of the board, or maybe they've got a projector doing the same old thing. So I would really encourage you to think about how the flipped classroom can personalize the learning environment for all students. I would encourage you, if you want to read more, to uh, check out our book, uh, co-published by ASCD and ISTE, or ISTE. Uh, flip your classroom, reach every kid in every class every day. Have a great day.